Um, so you, have, you can't really put things in chat because we can't see it. So whoever wrote the chat, so you feel free to comment out loud verbally. What does it say? Um, there was a, there was a yeah, that was me, Katie McGee. I, it's a little, it's a bit better. I wasn't sure if it was going to be like this the whole meeting. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. So, we're good. It is June 15th. The time is now 6.41 p.m. And uh, this is a meeting of the Finance and Facilities Committee. Uh, to start out, let's uh, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, we'll go around the room here in person, and then we'll introduce the people that are on the on the meeting. Let's start on the in the far corner here. Tom, uh, Thomas Jakarski, high school science teacher, varsity chemist coach. Michael McCoy, director of phys ed, health and athletics. Julia Long, board trustee. Chris Allen, board trustee. David Warner, board member, and chair. Tracy Manners, board trustee and parent of three. Steve Lincoln, parent of two of Woodlands. Dennis Police, director of facilities. Lisa Raymond, assistant superintendent for business. David Levac, David Lee, director of technology and innovation. Shelly Greenslade, here. Megan Hart, parent of two. Helen Hudson, the last year's facility. Go ahead, who are you? What's your name? Huh? Chris. Okay. Thank you, student. Student, right? Okay, um, we're going to start out. Um, Jim Wadig was a, a, a member of BBS Architecture, uh, was passed away. He was a beloved husband and father, architect, Eagle Scout, and troop leader, runner, rafter. Kayaker, scuba diver, skier, skydiver, an Islander fan. Um, I went to uh, one of the wakes for him. I thought maybe 20 people would bury there, and uh, there were about 200. And uh, you know, 20 of them were in Boy Scout uniforms. Uh, so he, he 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 touched a lot of lives. He was uh, he, he was a wonderful guy. Uh, you know, he's gone too soon. Uh, I I. I, I Usually funerals are either a life well lived, you know, the person's done everything, or it's a gone too soon because they didn't get to do everything. And, and this was, this one was kind of both. Um, so, you know, he will be missed. Does anybody want to say anything about him before we have a moment of silence? I think, uh, you know, Jim worked with BBS for 23 or 24 years. Um, he was like family. And... Uh, he was very serious, very good at his job. He was an amazing architect and designer. But it was interesting. Uh, once it was after work, after it was five o'clock, he turned into like the class clown. And he was a lot of fun. Um, he was, as you said, uh, kind of an adrenaline junkie. So Jim would try almost anything, especially if you dared him. And he was uh, really a lot of fun, really good guy. Um, he battled with cancer for about four years. Uh, he had it first colon cancer. Um, they were able to take care of it. And then uh, about a year ago, it came back. And not only did it come back in his colon, it had spread. And it was a much more aggressive form of cancer. And uh, Jim, I think, fought through it and willed himself. Uh, he worked right up until almost the very end because he wanted to. And he felt he would make himself crazy if he just sat at home and did nothing. And uh, that's kind of guy he was. He actually answered emails a couple of times from the hospital. And we would say, what are you doing, Jim? And he'd say, well, I have a little bit of downtime. So I have my company laptop. So I figured I would respond. And uh, just an amazing guy. Uh, we are going to miss him forever. He, he just was so great, such a, a great architect and just a great friend. So, um, you know, I don't know what else to say about him. You know, I, everything was so well attended. There were so many people, both the afternoon and the evening sessions of the wake. And like you said, a lot of Boy Scouts. He was very active, a troop leader, uh, Eagle Scout himself, uh, just involved in so much. So he leaves behind his wife and a 21-year-old son, Ryan. I'll tell you a fun story. We have a BBS softball team. And because Jim couldn't play this year because he wasn't feeling well, he sent his son Ryan to play with the team. So Ryan played with us this year. So we told Ryan, 
you know what, Ryan, um, we want you to keep playing with us. So uh, we want to remember Jim and, and have a member of family with us as well. So. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> I'm sorry okay. for your loss. I do want to say, um, so for people who are either new here or just coming recently, so Jim is, as you said, one of our architects. And so how you know Fred Siva's face and you see him, we used to see Jim a lot as well. So um, that's, you know, why it's very important and to take for us. All right, let's be silent for the moment. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, the next item on our agenda is the uh, meeting minutes. So now either you gonna bring up the meeting minutes or I am. Let's see if I'm able to uh, share screen. Okay. Please to share. Hello. It does. There we go. So, can anybody see it? I'm not seeing it on the screen here. Yeah. No, not yet. So that's my that's screen share does not work, right? Uh, oh, okay. Okay, we'll wait for the three second lag and see if it comes up. Thanks. No, we've got nothing. You're on your screen. Go here. Okay. You're going to share a screen that you button, right? I already hit share screen. Okay, window. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No. Which is <laughs> this guy, right? I think share. Did it work? Well, let's see. We've got something, but the question is what? Your screen sharing. Great. I have screen sharing, but I have no but I have no screen. Stop. 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 I think it's on the far right, Google X. Oh, don't make love to all the Google. Right. That's all of Google. Yeah, yeah, that's what that yeah, let's try this one. There we go. At last. Okay, and who's the three people? Yeah, if I close the wrong one, I'm out. So the, these are the meetings of the May 4th meeting. Uh, attendees were David Warner, Lisa Raymond, Dennis Pazlis, Chris Ballin. Katie McBee, Jessica Muldoon, Megan Hock, Gabrielle Barahona, Amy Ashley Moore, Tracy Marys, Victoria Bolton, Steve Morton, Ashley Pineda, Walter Simon, shouldn't be Water Simon, it should be Walter Simon. Walter. Julia Long, Sarah Lazari, Fred Siva, Judge Lind Iverson, Carol Allen, and Elizabeth Sedona. We're going to correct Julie's last name. Ooh, yes. Maybe. Ooh, Julie. Julie. I'm sure what you eat. Where are you doing Right after Walter Simon. Do you know what you're doing? No, it's, I didn't do this. Okay. Okay. Then uh, we, so we adopted minutes, reviewed the 2022-23 uh, budget documents because we're back before the budget vote. Um, provided a lot of information on the budget. Discussed the Woodlands Track update project, upgrade project, which at the time we thought was going to be um, the, 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 the six lane uh, version. And, uh, and we have since upgraded our expectations based on the bond. And you'll hear more about that tonight. David, yes. We click the blue admit button. Can you see that? I cannot see the blue admit button. No. No, it is not on my screen. Because all right, so let him take care of it. Can you see the blue admit button? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Go <ahead. laughs> 
Somebody put something in chat again. Okay. We discussed our energy performance contract status. And, what, and that's, uh, I think that's on schedule for tonight. We'll hear briefly about all of our projects. Uh, we discussed the Edgemont Corporation issue. And again, we'll hear more on that as uh, things have progressed tonight. And uh, then we reviewed the uh, status of the phase two project at, at member request. We were trying to have a short meeting since we were only two weeks out from the previous meeting, but people said we've got to get on that. So we did. Does anybody see anything? I move that we that approve the minutes change. as amended. So, so uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Minutes adopted. From my Katie McGee to the library. Oh, you can do it over there. Oh, yeah. That's oh, great. Because I can't He's see it. He's a lot of things right now. Right? Sorry. Okay. Can't do it if I can't see it. Yeah. Okay, so now let's see if we can get back to the uh, agenda. It's coming, coming here. You're probably agenda. Okay, didn't open any new windows. <laughs> so now we go on to the pictorial review of projects recently completed or in progress. And that is uh, Lisa Raymond and Dennis Puglis. And can you bring that project up, or do I need to try and do that myself? I'll try and do that. Yeah, sure. Can you bring it up so we can advance through them, like I can tell you? That's a pretty soon. Which file do you want to bring up? It's the uh, facility presentation, right? Facility. Uh, three down that one. Yeah. Should be yeah. best Basil Prez right. 06 or yeah. 23. You got it. Okay. You make it so. Mm -hmm. We should do like a and then move my hands That's the Right there. Right there. I'm like a vision person. Yeah. Okay, so at the February 6th, or excuse me, for February, June 6th, Board of Education meeting, uh, Mr. Puglis and I put this facilities projects and improvement PowerPoint together for the board. So you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, how are our district projects funded? We can fund them in many different ways. We can use money from capital and our fund transfers, which we include in the budget process, if you remember over the last several years and have the voters um, approve on those projects. Um, we do have money budgeted in Mr. Puglis's codes under the general fund for small repairs and projects to be done. We are going to do an energy performance contract and that's how we are funding that larger project. And then we do have money in a capital fund, a capital reserve that was established um, by the taxpayers that we are allowed to put money in. And in order to take money out of the capital reserve, we will have to ask the taxpayers through a referendum um, if we can take money out of there to apply to a project. And we have a capital reserve that can be used for any repairs and improvements by Board of Education resolution. And, the, and lastly, you can put a bond up to the public for vote on any larger project that would need funding. Next slide. So any, uh, all of the, not all of, but the, a good portion of the projects that we have completed and are in progress are currently right now um, at the mansion as part of capital construction phase one, we are having roof and attic uh, window replacement done. If you have driven past or down Pack of Cone Road, you've seen people working on the mansion roof. And here are just some pictures of the work in progress. Next, you'll see the Early Childhood Program main building off of Pat Capone Road. Um, this year, we have done two floor replacements in classrooms. Next. Uh, we also have done some sidewalk repairs and replacements. And if you go down to the next slide, thank you. You'll see here before and after pictures of what um, Mr. Kublis has had done um, for um, ECP and on the steps and some of the walkways. 
We also recently had the canopies on the um, ECP playground replaced since they were rotting out. At Highview Elementary School during capital construction phase one, we um, replaced a partial roof and you'll see here the before, after and during the construction of work being done. And again, through the phase one project, the, the glazed panels that were around the gymnasium um, were not fire, fire rated. Were not fire rated and they were replaced. Also at Highview Elementary School, the emergency access road that leads up to the back and to the nurse's office, we had that um, redone for easier access. At LF Jackson, uh, last summer, we had the hallways removed and replaced. And here is some before and after pictures. The benches at the playground, um, you'll see here are before and after again of what they looked like and um, the ones that were replaced. Also, you'll see in the first picture in the background, the element, uh, the ECP playground that was done um, a couple summers ago. At RJ Bailey, we have replaced classroom floors there. We try to do a couple of floors a year till we get all of the classroom floors done. And here's the before, after, and the finished product. Mr. Lise, could you let Gabby Barahorn, please? Thank you. Also, as part of the capital construction phase one, as you heard, if you uh, were listening to our short board meeting, we are doing uh, starting the ventilation work. And you'll see here in the buildings, those dark rectangular squares are where the contractor has broken through um, into the building to do the uh, ventilation work. And on the right, you will see where they are going to hang the units. Mr. Puglis also had the steps repaired at R.J. Bailey um, in the front and the auditorium. I'm happy to say that we are 99% there with getting the funding from former Assemblyman Abinante. I have been working with the Dormitory Authority of the State of New York to get the $500,000 that Senator Aben um, excuse me, Assemblyman Abinante has given to us. This just shows you the auditorium with the seating having been removed. I heard from DASNY again today that it has gone through the Senate and we are just waiting for two signatures, one from Dr. Iverson and one from our legal counsel. On the final paperwork for the funding, we should receive that and then that project should be in the works. The project also for the auditorium is at SED facility planning. Um, BBS has submitted that um, paperwork and we are waiting for any, they are waiting for any questions and hopefully we'll get approval so we can start the process to get that done. The RJ Bailey Elementary School was part of the capital and fund transfer from this school year. So part of that $1.3 million that the taxpayers approved to be transferred to the capital fund in the 22-23 budget was used to replace the RJ Bailey gymnasium floor. At the Woodlands Middle High School, when Mr. Puglis first started and he did tours of all the building, he noticed that out by the small gym exit that this um, was in severe deterioration and he had our contractor come in and redo that work to make it safer. He also uh, did the work same kind of work uh, at the gear. The Woodlands Middle High School gymnasium was also replaced during last summer as part of the capital interfund transfer. And if you remember, the athletic driveway had been um, that curve going into the driveway had been. Um, the radius was a little wider. Right, the right radius was widened to make curve. it more safe for buses and cars to pass one another or just two vehicles passing um, one another. The Morton House um, that was uh, by um, LF Jackson Elementary School was deemed uninhabitable and we had that removed. Um, so it wasn't a, a safety hazard. And at the transportation building, we needed to have the boilers replaced there when they had failed. So this again is before and after pictures. Other projects that have been done or are in the works are the Woodlands Middle High School vestibule. We are very close to um, 
getting that work started. We're hoping that will start after graduation because the uh, it will take up some of the parking space in the front of the school. We didn't want to interrupt graduation. The RJ Bailey Elementary School Playground, you'll see it uh, on the right. That is a, was a work in progress at the time, but that was also replaced. Highview Elementary School Playground, one of those playgrounds was also done. Um, the Early Childhood Program uh, Playground at Ellip Jackson Elementary School, the boy, they, we have done major boiler repairs, RJ Bailey exterior masonry work on the lintels. Um, the former director of facilities, um, Mr. Falcone, has that work done. We are currently in the uh, phase one. Uh, we will be concentrating on ventilation this summer. Uh, now that the May 15th deadline has passed and the energy performance contract, which was approved by the voters January 17th of 2023, is in, um, the, uh, I believe, in the de final design phases and will be going to SCD for approval. So just to show you what projects have we done that were uh, capital interfund transfer money and or grants from our legislature. As I said, we did the Woodlands Middle High School gym that is completed, the RJ Bailey gym that is completed. The Woodlands Middle High School fire hydrant work um, that will be done, that is still a work in progress. Capital interfund transfers for next school year will be the RJ Bailey auditorium roof. Since we are going to be putting a nice new auditorium in there, we don't want anything leaking on those new seatings and floors. So we will be replacing that auditorium roof. I view third grade window walls, those will be replaced, and we will do some bathroom repairs. For the DASNY grants, we got the $500,000 from the former Assemblyman Avenante, and then um, Senator Stuart Cousins matched the $500,000 grant, and we are using that for the partial, uh, that will contribute to the Woodlands Middle High School track replacement. So uh, the Board of Education had asked that we give them um, a couple proposals here. This first is, um, we would call this capital construction phase two. This includes the roof, the track, uh, all of the roofs, track, Woodlands Middle High School, and the tennis courts. And you'll see here, and I apologize that it is um, small, but we will get this presentation onto our website if it's not already there. So you can see what the different funding levels were for each project, whether we, we had, um, proposed to move some money out of the repair reserve to the capital reserve, which is allowed um, by Board of Education resolution, they can move money into the capital reserve. By doing this, it would help offset the cost of the project. So you'll see here that scenario one is just the total cost of the project, and if we bonded that entirely. Scenario two is if we apply, uh, apply $2 million, from the capital reserve. And the third option is if we um, contributed 3.5 million to make the bond a lesser amount. The next screen will show you that if we only did the roofs with the same scenario, if uh, we transferred money to the capital reserve and then applied some of it to these projects. Mr. Elise, could you go back up to the, the first one? At the last Board of Education meeting, the board decided that they would go with option three. Okay, so one, we right. will um, propose a project that will replace some of the majority of the roofs, not all of the roofs. Um, I believe that the early childhood program main building is not included in that. It will fund the rest of the money needed to replace our track and it will do redo the tennis courts here. We will apply three and a half million dollars from the capital reserve by border excuse me, by voter approval. And then we will ask also to bond the additional amount. You'll see then what the SII has spoken with our bond council about what our estimated total principal and interest would be for 15 years at four and a half percent interest. And then the last um, box shows what the approximate cost with that kind of bond would be for to the taxpayers for the first year. Again, these are just estimates because as we know, the interest rates will change and our, our assessment rates will change and our equalization rates will change. But this will just show you, give you an idea of what an increase in a tax bill would be with this kind of project. 
Okay, and so I would like to ask a question, and that is, I know that in a previous uh, projects that, that we've uh, they've done, and some of them ill-fated, uh, we went through the process of figuring out what the uh, the uh, state building aid would end up being for uh, for the project. Mm -hmm. I know that we officially have the minimum allowed state building aid, which is 10%, but 10% is really 10%. It's they have different rates for different kinds of square footage of different floor spaces. Right. A classroom gets more aid than a hallway, that sort of thing. Right. And you end up with about half of what you thought you had. And, and the last person to work on something like this, Croton, getting about a 5.03% effective rate out of the 10%. So uh, the question is, um, where in the process is that negotiation and will it affect the final number for the bond and of course our schedule? So you we're not gonna get state aid on any of this until the project is completed. Correct. Okay, and all of the paperwork is filed with SED, which there are different stages and different paperwork that has to be filed. Mm -hmm. There also is um, time, I don't wanna say time limits or time constraints, but if you don't get something in, let's say by, December 15th, you have to wait a whole nother year. So it's it really all is in timing with when the project gets done. And as soon as that is done and, and paperwork is done, and Amy and I then can get the uh, paperwork into SED, you know, with BBS's help um, and meet these deadlines, then the aid will be about 18 months. After. Yes, from the time that we apply for it, get it. As far as what percentage of the 10% that we would get, I would have to work with um, Mr. Siba and Mr. Messina um, to find out if they could help us to find out uh, what percentages a, a tennis court would get, a track would get, and a roof would get. And uh, do we need to know this number before we go to bond? Um. I don't will it affect the know. amount of the bond? No. Okay. No. No, it will not. Hmm. May I ask a question for clarification, please? The state aid is the help of or affect the cost of the bond. Correct. That's why the same thing that why the bond or the amortization is over 15 years. They try to match it up with the, the life of state aid also. Okay, so in districts in which the percentage of aid is much higher, what happens is they look and they say, okay, 30% of my project will be paid for by state aid, therefore my bond will be much smaller. In the same way that we're taking money from our reserves and making the bond much smaller than the size of the project. Correct. So I... I want to know if it's significant, so I need to know whether whether we're going to change the thing or not. I don't believe it. No, don't because it would be. You no, know, I don't believe it would change the. Mm -hmm. Okay. May I ask a question, Mr. Warner? Yes. I just want to be clear. I thought I heard that the district actually has to pay the entire cost of the the project up front, and then we would get reimbursement of state aid after the fact. Is that correct? No. No, that, that's not correct. So what happens is um, we would take the three, we would have the three and a half million dollars from the capital reserve if the taxpayers approve that. And then what we would do is we wouldn't take the bond um, all at once. Because once you take the bond in its entirety, it's just like any other loan, you're going to have to start paying on it. So what we would do is work with BBS and the project would be done in phases. Okay, so what is it going to say it gets done and let, let's just say hypothetically this would start next year. So I would, uh, we would work with Mr. Siba and Mr. Messina. What do you think could get done next year and how much is that going to cost? So Can I, I interrupt work... you for just a moment? What I'm trying to see is when do we get the state aid back? At what point do the we state... get that money? The, state, the project will have to be done in paperwork filed with SED facilities planning, and then we would get state aid in the next school year, but the project has to be complete. So if it takes two years, it won't be until the end of the third the year. The third year, right. Mm -hmm. So in fact, we don't get the money from the state until after the project is done. Correct. 
So that means that the district has to put up all the payments to all the contractors as the project is progressing, and then we get the money back from the state afterwards. Yeah, that's why we're bonded. Right. That's why we would bond it, yes. Oh, I understand. But if, if we're talking about state aid, it's important to understand that we have to take out a bond for the entire amount that it's yes. going to cost us because right. we don't get the money back from the state until after the work is done. Correct. Correct. Okay. And we only get 10%. Right. Steve. Okay. Thank and my, you. And one of my concerns at this point was, did we were we going to delay the uh, the process of getting a bond vote out? And I think the answer to that is no. Right. No. Good. So. So we have set up. We have. I have had Ms. DeFrancesco uh, confirm the date of October seventeenth as the board wanted for a vote for this project, which is very close behind, hopefully, if we do some sort of large district-wide event like round there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, uh, are there other questions before we move forward? Okay. So uh, there are different portions to this. Can we go back to the agenda? Yes, this is the next one. Oh, this is the next one. Okay. That's, 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 we're segueing into the first part. Yeah. Okay, so the, the winning option at the last board meeting is what is actually sitting on the agenda. If you scroll down a little bit. Number four, two, three, okay. There you go. So you see there you have the roofs for the uh, for Leah Jackson, High View, RJ Bailey, Woodlands. Then you have the, this, I put in the, the eight lane track because that's the estimate that, that we have that comes closest. Um, and uh, and then there the, and then there the tennis courts and the tennis court number is I believe uh, from the uh, building conditions survey and, and we were trying to get the U.S. Tennis Association to give us some money but for three courts they won't give you more than twenty thousand dollars which won't work for us and so we had to go out and find a way to get uh, a much larger amount of, of money to come into play so that is that that is to be looked at and developed further. But tonight, uh, we wanted to look at the, the track, and so we uh, consulted with the athletic director uh, and, uh, and any coaches we can find, uh, Charlene Velasileski, I believe is, is one, and, uh, and see what needed to be in that project in depth and detail. So I understand you have a presentation for us? Uh, just to you know, comment a little bit on it, um, you know, the to two students or two athletes that came about a year ago and, and spoke about our track, it, it was just a voice of, of all of our track athletes and, and what we really need down there. And we're like a sleeping giant here. Um, our track is set off of campus um, and we have a great facility for an eight lane track to eventually host sectionals and counties and hopefully years later is, is a statement here. And that would be our goal. Um, and it would also help our athletes to stay in the district. Um, track and field, um, I, this is my fifth, I believe my fifth year as athletic director here, and track and field each year has become bigger and bigger um, for us with the number of participation, and it just helps out for our students to attend college. Um, it's, in my opinion, probably the best way to get a scholarship in college. Um, Innately, track um, can help us um, also bring in revenue. As we go, when you host sectionals and, and counties in the state meet, um, you have concessions, you have admission fees. Um, you can also hold invitations, Saturday invitations, which we would host and we would charge other schools to come. And, you know, our senior class could have a, a concession stand there. Um, and also there are seventh and eighth graders to host a modified track meet there, um, which would be great. Um, we have a fabulous cross country course, um, which now will be with us with a, with a track also. Um, and we're just hoping as, as an athletic director is um, Mr. Azaleski is here is representing our track program um, to have something that we can be proud of here. And, and that's what it is. And, and, you know, we've sent our track athletes sometimes out to other schools to practice and it's, it's hard. It, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, we, you know, last year we had a one individual tennis state meet um, and it's a benefit to him that he worked hard and not had a track. Um, my first year, four years ago, we sent a relay team to a state meet um, practicing on a cinder track. Um, and I, I just think that this would be a great opportunity for us. And you said practicing on a cinder track? Yes. That's what we had. What is this? So, what is a cinder? It's a driveway, it's concrete. Um, years ago, years and years ago, back in the 80s, that's what 
tracks were, you know, the, that, you know, the, the cinder track would soften as the heat would come, but it's so outdated that it's it's kind of, it's not that it's unsafe, but you cannot run track routes on it at all. I was just going to say, uh, back when I was in high school, and I was actually at uh, Howard, Woodland had a stellar track team. I mean, it's, it, it's something that was here, and it was part of the community. And then when we went to run with Woodland, it was a big deal. And they got all types of publicity. They had people who were on the national level. And it's a chain that students would decide to leave the district because we don't have the facility. And it'd be a bonus for the, the community as well. And I just don't think it also helps athletics, but it helps our phys ed classes. Um, it gives us an opportunity for our phys ed classes. Not here, just here at Woodlands Middle High School, but Leah Jackson. Leah Jackson, when I go to Leah Jackson, we would, I would bring my phys ed classes over here uh, and we use the turf. But now if we had a track, we can, you know, show them what track and field is. Okay. So are there other um, ancillary or, 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 or lesser, or, I shouldn't say lesser, are there other events that, that need to be uh, included uh, and, and lesser facilities, do you need a place for shot put? What, what do you need in order to host a meet front? So the throwing events, the shot put, the discus, the javelin, um, there's a field off to the side that we won't have to put into this, that we, we wouldn't have to spend, use this money to spend it. It's mm -hmm. there already, just these lines and it's there. Um, Sorry, good. can they throw off of grass or would yes. we need to put down that? There, is, there is one there already. Um, where did book over there? Yeah. And I saw the little concrete patch and then the grass. Yeah. Where they also know they have that, I don't know, the exactly. fake surface where they also, the or road. dirt where they also spin on. There's Do you also, need that? There's only part of the park, but I have a portable one. Uh, yes. So we would have okay. to. So I'm trying to understand where you're talking about. So if you're driving down to the, the turf, yeah. the scoreboard is here. Mm -hmm. Right across the scoreboard, there's a path that goes and there's an open field. There, that is ours. On the other side of the, correct. On the other side of the roadway. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can't see it. You would never notice there. Yeah. It's, it's a great there. option because I didn't check it out. Just for curiosity's sake, if we're looking at the football field from this home stands. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the grassy area to the left outside of the fence. Is that roomy enough to put the shot put? So everything's kind of together. It is. Or... Which, but it is. It's it's, it's different. Different schools have different ways. There's there's schools that have throwing areas that are away. For instance, about we mentioned Valhalla actually has their throwing area is to the right away from the track. Um, you could possibly do it behind the football field if you're looking at home stands to the left. You could possibly do it right okay. there. So so two things. One, because I think we need to have a plan B for various reasons. But two, if that's kind of outside this project scope, because that's a portable thing, you can set up and just paint the lines mm -hmm. then maybe we can move on from that but it's okay it's, mm -hmm. it then helps us know that we have that ability to do it little extra cost no extra cost in this project to be able to move to those meets where we can make revenue and that would uh, so we can move back to that the, other is the best possible right. outcome okay so do you have a, a proposal that you wish to show in addition or are you do you want to look at the proposal that had already put, been put out by BBS. I saw both proposals. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, just the design of it, obviously we're not there yet. Right. Of it, but you know, it's it's when you, with track and field, it, it, things that are built into like with the high jump pit, the pole vault pit, the long and triple jump, um, there's different designs and different ways that I, that I have seen and, and I have an idea of that we could do um, that I think are beneficial to us. So who did those proposals? Our architects? Those are BBS architect proposals. So they, they didn't consult with, any of the athletic people? They're in the meeting. They're in the meeting right now. I know you are. And did you and, and, get to consult? Do you have athletic people in your like? Do you have an athletics specialist? You know, our attorneys always say that. The first you in their room when he talks. So, do you guys have like athletic arm of your? So, you. yeah, I I get the gist of the question. So. We have, uh, we have landscape architects on our staff that do this all the time. And right now, where we're at in the design process, we haven't even got started the design process, but this number that we gave you is nothing more than an estimate for a similar size and scope of yeah. what you're looking for. Exactly. So it includes a triple jump, it includes a long jump, the pole vault, 
and the lane tracks, you know, the other six or eight that we've discussed or been asked to estimate. So, uh, you know, once this gets approved, then of course we would have kickoff meeting and, and start the design process with uh, your staff and the athletic, athletic director and get into the the uh, details of what that proposal or estimate would entail. So it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, it is every venue would need to host state county sectionals except steeplechase. Yes, but with with the steeplechase, and you know, some like the sectionals this year, the counties one of them, like they'll have the steeplechase at a different school on a different day. It's common. It's common to have a steeplechase at one school, and then the next day the other events will be here. The, 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 are there other are there steeplechase places nearby? Yes, about how Charlene, if you correct me, does Valhalla have the steeple chase? I don't think Valhalla has a steeplechase because they had the, a plumbing issue. Um, but I know White Plains does nearby. And there's also, I think, um, uh, Edg not Edgemont. East Chester, Edgemont. Edgemont. Edgemont has steeplechase. Yeah. But it's common to have that where they'll have, um, you know, day one here and day two at another place just for, for events. You know, the, the core events, you know, the high jump, the triple jump, the pole vault, and the high jump, those you have to have. Um, you know, for a sectional county meet for an eight lane track, the top eight qualify. So that's why they're really looking for an eight lane track. Right. Because you, you want them, you, when you're running an event, you want all eight competitors on the track running against each other. Each other. Um, you don't want to have, you know, four in one race, four in the other race, and then the time. It's not fair to the athletes. And then the parent meets are long enough in there. Correct. And anyway. that's one of the other right. you get to. Split it up and yes. have multiple eights. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you got it. So the Bring it back together. You're going to meet with our athletic folks. So the athletic director and hopefully coaches before moving forward once the bond is approved. Correct. Okay, thank you. So Charlene, are you happy with this uh, size project? Uh, yeah, I would love an eight-lane track. <laughs> well, I have a question. Go ahead. So, so just looking at the project, it says, you know, number five, new high jump and long jump. You mentioned pull vault, triple jump. Is all that in the same space? Yeah, I mean, or I mean, traditional? Yeah, we have, we have I've spoken about there. that. It's like, you know, you have one runway, you know, long jump is to the left, mm -hmm. triple jump is to, to the right, and the pole vault's in the middle. So it's it's one or two okay. runways. And we have that space in between like the football and the soccer goal to the end, other end of the oval. I'm, I'm just, looking just, at it. The architects have actually looked at our well, physical that's space. That's where, the, that's where the current runway is for the long jump. Right. But just there's space over that long way to do both events. I believe so with the, that half moon behind. Right. That's where. Okay. So go and make sure that. To, to the architects, these, these estimates are they based on our track? Like, did you look at our physical space to make sure it's got room for? Okay, yep. Our track currently is how many lanes? Six. So, is the, the space the, the way it is now still able to do it? They added two more lanes. Do yes, we look. We look, yes, we looked at it. Uh, John Longo, our, our landscape architect, went to the site, he walked the site. Uh, to see if we could ex expand the lanes to two additional lanes, and it appears everything is is within the confines of what you have now. Um, yeah, you know, the bleachers were the one concern we had if the bleachers would be impacted by it, but it appears that you have enough clearances around everything, so we can, you know, preliminarily do the project. Looks like it's a go. Um, again, once we get into it, there'll be. You know, soil warnings done and, and whatnot to make sure everything is compatible with what needs to be out there. But this estimate, yeah, like I said, similar size and scope with other jobs we've done in the past as a firm. This is the pretty much what you see as a boilerplate for any kind of uh, track expansion or, or track modification. Gabriella? Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. I just have, I guess, two questions. First question is, David, you mentioned there's a meeting happening uh i guess now about what the input as to what items are going to be included as part of the the track work correct and we also have okay. a tennis coach chair if you're if we want to talk about that a little bit because we're right yeah, now we're operating off of what's in the building condition survey go ahead okay 
So the question is this, based on those two conversations that are happening with both, let's, let's tell us would be the same question. Will that information uh, be available before, I guess, moving forward with the amount that the district is looking to set up for the bond? It, it's We're looking for a conceptual design. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, it's kind of putting the cart before the horse. Uh, typically, okay. we get into the details of it until after the funding has been procured. Okay. So then I guess uh, if it was covered already and I missed it, I apologize. My second question is, has there ever been a situation where I understand now it's a it's an estimate and it's a placeholder. Has there ever been a situation where the work that comes in costs less? And if so, what happens with the difference, given that it's already earmarked for a specific project? Uh, Lisa, you want to take that one or you want me to answer? No, you can. Go ahead. Okay. So, so typically when a project's under budget, the money goes back to the, the district and they can either uh, give it back to the bond payers or, or roll it into other projects with the approval of, of the public. So um, that's my understanding. We would probably buy board resolution. You'd have to buy board resolution, right? So technically, Got if it. there is any money that's left over, it goes to offset the bond payment uh, traditionally. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. So, or we could do it. Go ahead. The scoreboard for if we're going to have a new track and have meets there, I would hope we could actually have a working scoreboard because our scoreboard is a little inconsistent. And we still have electricity issues with that. We do have electricity issues there and all of yeah. that. Well, so, we may not have to wait on that. We may be able to do things in the way we're we're doing end of year funding. Maybe that it's small enough. It depends on the price tag. Katie McGee. Hi. Katie McGee. Hi. Yeah, somebody had asked me this week, um, has there been any talk about including lights at the at the field in this project or no? That's not part of it. That's another phase. I think it would be fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so, but I just wanted to clarify for this person. Thanks. We did. So I don't know what meeting it was in that we... I remember a conversation with someone about lights, um, maybe the same person, I don't know. I don't know if it was in a meeting, but then we talked about um, if you have lights, then you're inviting nighttime activity. And then if you have nighttime activity, how do you, you know, enforce, you know. We have a five-year goal to open out the, the, the campus. And then, and then also uh, electricity. So I don't remember what meeting it was in, but maybe it was the same person where we talked about that. Um, but there are schools that have nighttime lights and nighttime security. So. And their fields are probably closer to their buildings. Too. And more so, so, so people can see. Hey, yeah. not hidden. Yeah, unrelated question, but the scoreboard's brought, been brought up. Is that just used for football games or? Or could it be used for soccer? It can be used for both. Like track and field, right? Yes. Well, the, the current scoreboard cannot be used for track and field. Right. I mean, okay. Thank you. Okay. Football, soccer, and well, that's It's all true. Like that is a future. It's all true. Okay, so this is going much more smoothly than I than I had anticipated. So uh, just on the uh, just on the tennis court side, uh, Mr. Trokarski, do you have a vision of, uh, of of what you think should be happening with the tennis courts? And yes. uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, ideally, I would love six, but we can't get six. Uh, I I can see. Uh, I made a plan. I showed Mr. McCoy. Um, if we turn the course, we could actually get four. And four would be much more advantageous, especially especially with the girls' varsity because it gets darker later in the season. And when you play on three courts, we play at Irvington. Irvington has three courts, and it, 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 you get nighttime issues. So if we play home, we don't have a problem because we play at uh, Anthony Veterans. They have we have five courts that we secure, so it's a little bit easier because um, we're a small school uh, for the five courts. Can we pay for those courts that we reserve it in? No, we don't. We're the transportation. Part of the need to pay for transportation. So we've been we used to practice 
being with myself. But we used to practice there every day, busing, and then it, you know, gas prices went up, so they stopped that. So we started practicing at home, which I like because the kids are here. Um, I can use the ball machine. Um, and so I like that. Um, I like that because the kids are practicing and they're watching the girls' softball game. So there's that sense of, of just being home. Um, but definitely, if you rotate the courts and do two and two, um, it would be great. This four would be practice. Um, the other thing is, I've always, there's always been a sign on the tennis courts that they're community use. Now, my students, um, a former coach that used to work here, would allow any of my varsity players to go to Greenberg and play, but you have to pay. So they have to get a family tennis pass to pay and play over there during the summer. So, so if we had courts here, um, they wouldn't have to do that. Plus, the community can, you, I mean, this, there's been a sign up there that says the community is after school. So I would love that. And if we paint pickleball courts, we're bringing people in after school that really, you know, it just highlights our school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, you know, I would love a little electricity to there. And there. Yeah. I mean, it would be perfect because if we pull electricity to the front corner, then even baseball can pull. Because right now I use a hundred foot, I use a hundred foot uh, extension cord to get from the school, so I can use the ball machine. Um, but yeah, a little shed, simple, uh, simple tree removal. I mean, tree removal is never simple, but um, four courts, pickleball, paint. Uh, it would be great because even communities. I know uh, Theodore Young only has two, so I've had kids. I've had kids years ago. They would they would teach tennis over at the community center um, over the summer. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is something. It would be good for camp. No mm -hmm. camp is here, so it just it just adds to it, and then we don't have to bus games over there. We have, we have at least 14, 15 games a season, so you're taking 30 times for a bus to go to the veterans, which is pricey. All right. So I assume that uh, back to BBS at this point. I assume that three courts is all you can get out of the five hundred thousand. Is that correct? That's pretty close. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so three, three, three courts. Mr. Lisa, you had a question. I, I did. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just thinking if you're going to dig for conduit and run electric, right? Maybe think about running fiber also, which would allow us cameras oh, both for yeah. three right. and for security, running fiber optics out there. Okay. And then we can, we can build a network rack in the press box. And then support networking out there. Would all be outside the scope of the project just to be ready, right? Uh, correct, unless people are coming back and say, yes, this is very inexpensive. <laughs> but you can say, okay, here's what the bond is. The bond gets you the three good working courts, and then we do some additional things uh, at ends of school years with whatever funding we've got left over and Creep toward elegance. And maybe by the time the ETC moves on, we have the car that are gathering electricity, we can somehow. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a whole different ball. Right. That's a whole different ball. Yes. So, however, the 500,000 for the tennis courts is estimated to be 500,000 for the tennis courts. There was conversation about a potential grant. Would that grant cover? The U.S. tennis the grant was twenty thousand dollars for three courts and thirty five thousand if you got four. Yeah, at maximum. So that's their maximum. No, they don't pay. Right. So it, it's it's like I, I've got my tennis court and it's not quite in tip top shape. So here's my grant and, and and we'll clean it up for you. That's what those do. It's not. I'm going to build a tennis court with that. We're still Especially hoping because that's where a school. Thirty five k might put the electrical in there. And that's true. That's true. We can, we can. And the four courts, you're saying, if you just change rotation. So we have enough space because it's 120 feet wide per court. We have three courts. So if we just rotated two of them and just went length to length two and then built into the extra parking lot or that flat area outside the court, mm -hmm. I have one, two, three, four. 
I only need a fence in the middle. I don't need a fence between the two side-by-side -side boards, but you know, just run a perimeter fence and then one in the middle. Gates on this side, school sides for security, I don't need gates out there. So, but I figured since there's already a foundation here with the asphalt that's there, what are we doing with it, right? Because now you're gonna have these three forks side by side, right? right? And then you guys should have this asphalt. Well, I'm not sure that we're keeping the existing foundation. Right. Uh, just a minute. Ashley, did you want to say something? Yeah, thank you. Um, the question I had going back to um, the questions about electricity and all the other add-ons that we would love to have. Um, Ms. Raymond, if I remember correctly, during our last board meeting where we had this discussion on the bond, once this is all said and done, we are expecting reimbursement of funding of what was it 1.6 million dollars i think for um ventilation etc stuff from one of the acts correct correct so correct. i would so so what i would thank you david so what i would suggest is because we do have a limited plan and we have a board approved proposal uh, my suggestion would be that we keep all those extra add-ons in mind and maybe that's where that 1.6 that comes back, which we know is coming, I think we said we're estimating it summer of 2024, um, because that paperwork's already underway. Maybe we can line that funding up, because uh, this project is probably gonna even be broken ground by then. So that might be the funding you guys can have to add those things on, so that it all gets done at the same time on some level, right? So that was just a suggestion for you as a team. Okay. Uh, good idea. Skipping back to BBS, did you want to talk about the asphalt foundation and whether it whether it's going away or not? It, it, it all gets removed. Yeah. It will what? All get removed. It'll, it'll all get removed. Yeah. You're going to remove about three inches, three to four inches of asphalt that's there currently. Is that to get uh, a level? I would, I would like to talk to John and and review it with him for the four courts. Just to make sure that it will fit, you know, based off of his dimensions and and his, his experience. Uh, and I'd be happy to update the estimate to include the electric. Um, if you're looking to even add more to the scope as far as pickleball courts go, is what I'm hearing. Uh, fiber optic to, to the to the area. Let us look at that and see and come back with some estimates for you on what that might cost. To give you a ballpark number and then you can always make the determination whether or not you want to keep the original 500 as is or you want to increase it to whatever the, the new number might be now the bond is set yes. right so yes. we, we would bring in additional reserves if we want to do that go ahead so i can't recall maybe you can go ahead. i can't recall maybe you could clarify david suceva messina Raymond, I don't remember who clarified this, but why can't we get additional estimates? Like from additional companies? We won't. Well, there, there are no estimates for the construction. These are estimates from the architects. The architects won't do the work. So it'll go out to bid. So it's going out to bid with the estimated cost, but when we get our estimates, it could come in lower. Yes. So how often does that happen though? Well, it did recently when we had the bid opening for part of the capital construction phase one project. Okay. And if you remember the vestibule, the payment was wow. what we thought. Well, the quality. Oh, the... yeah. so I'm saying it does everything. Part of some of phase one came in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do we have a, we're talking estimates for the tenants courts, but do we have a document that shows us? No, we don't. Something, you know. I believe, I I believe she had the, the initial, uh, we had oh, an we attempt at, at going for uh, a less expensive resurfacing with a material that people didn't like mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago when we thought that the asphalt base was a little stronger. And uh, and so there's that old set of estimates, and then the architects came back and said we looked at it again, and the asphalt's gotten to be in even worse shape than we thought. 
we have to replace everything, we're back to our building condition survey. Right. So yes, there's some old stuff where you're going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars and try and recondition something, but it's no longer viable. So we're talking, I mean, so, what, so we're we've back, not seen a nice back to BCS like for uh, not this current. Okay. So here's my here's my worry. Like if we're estimating higher, and this is all public meetings. The bids are going to come in, mm -hmm. with the exception of the vegetable bureau. That don't get me started about that. The bids are going to all come in around this. Like, are are these estimates often higher than they really should be? Like, are how? Maybe I should ask. So you have safety you, versus okay. Maybe maybe I should ask. How do you come to the estimate? Like, do you go by previous projects? Do you guys go by like? Do you survey companies that do these projects? Because there were a community member that had found some companies that had very similar work done in New York schools. Granted, they don't have the same issues all the time that we do, but the numbers are a lot lower. So I'm wondering, like, maybe I should ask, how do you get here? Go ahead, Mike. So I'll speak, and I'm going to ask Brent to chime in a little bit too, because I I can't answer as far as how many tennis court projects the firm has done over the past 30 years or whatever it is. Um, but just keep in mind that what we're doing now, these uh, estimates are just that. It's a, it's a budgetary estimate. It's to help you set a dollar value to go out and get funding for whichever way you, you get your funding. Um, so least, we we least... have done hundreds of tennis courts over the past 30 years, a number up in Westchester County with both of our landscape architects. So we have a very good handle on what tennis courts cost. So that's what the estimates are based on, historical data. Uh, over the last mainly, maybe three years though, we don't wanna go back too far because obviously prices have jumped due to COVID. So that's what the pricing is based on at this point. There is some contingency money in there, as you can see on the track. Because as Mike said before, we haven't done test borings yet. We haven't done anything yet. So, you know, we're providing an estimate kind of without the benefit of us being able to do design work. And, you know, the district doesn't want to authorize us to do design work because then there's cost incurred and there's no money to pay for that at this point. So typically we don't start the design work till after the bond is successful, but we do estimate a cost like this all the time. We did that on all of the phase one projects, all the other projects we've done for you. And I think as you've seen, our estimates have been good. We've been able to bring our projects in slightly under budget, but all of our estimates have been ballpark. So that's what they're based on. They're based on our history and experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it is an estimated cost, but there is some design contingency money in there in case we find something. There's construction contingency money in there in case we dig up the courts and find an old concrete foundation or something in there that we have to pull out. There's escalation in there because things are gonna cost more in the future if we do them say next summer, as opposed to this summer. Uh, there's fees and then there's owner soft costs and the owner soft costs are really your borrowing fees, your legal fees, your testing fees. Um, if you wanted to hire a construction management firm or clerk of the works or something like that. So that's your money for covering the things that happen on your end. So that's basically what is, goes into the 1.173 million. Thank you. And that's really helpful to go over um, because I think, you know, sometimes you have new people tuning in. And even if you're old people, you need to hear that you're not a work in this field, right? So you need to hear certain things over and over again before it, may, you know, and I have a whole list for you, Ms. Raymond, of questions on the kind of struggle and funding resources again. Um, so that's helpful. Thank you for explaining. Okay, are there any other questions? All right, so uh, I have one question and that's if I wanna advertise for bond, is there a conceptual drawing that I can get that will represent the, uh, the, the track area and the tennis court area so that we can have, an, uh, uh, the public has an idea of what it is that they're, uh, they're uh, going to vote for? Uh, there is nothing yet, but I can find out if we can do it. Absolutely. Um, you mean you want drawings of the roofs? 
Well, yeah, the moose are the draw for people that wouldn't necessarily support the barn or support a new tennis court or a new track. The roofs are things that are practical that people who don't normally support the schools might approve of, you know, roof project and mm -hmm. build of the building. So yeah, not necessarily drawings of the roof, but some sort of conceptual visual. So well, like a silhouette of each building, maybe from the top. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, yes, no objection here. Okay, very good, yes, Mr. Tukarski. Just speaking about roofs and my science background, are they gonna be painted white? Ooh. So that they reflect some so they reflect, like, like you mean like the new wing uh, and high view, the and new scene roof exactly high view, right? right. right. And, and then yeah. it's awesome. And then in some cases, the, the, if there is no, if there are no overshadowing trees, like if that, that high view wing, then we may at some point in the future be able to put solar panels on top. And then, right, the generation of that would maybe use to offset things like the cost of charging up electric buses. Right? So you know, there, are, there are many things, the good things that can happen if, if, we, uh, if we have new roofs, okay? in addition with not leaking. Okay. <laughs> that needs to go in the, the information that we should show to the public. Yes. Okay. <laughs> One last, one last thing for me, just think, you know, when you're talking about the track and the tennis courts and everything, it's athletics, 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 but it's it's also going to be for our phys ed classes. And I think that's when we have to make sure that once this bond goes out what? for our phys ed classes. Oh. Um, you know, we're, we're big now with the social emotional and, you know, tennis courts with pickleball and taking the students down to the track and things like that, it, it's going to benefit the entire population. And I think it's, you know, we always look at just athletics, athletics, but it's not, it's more of a, a wide base. And, and even and community based, okay. like you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking when you have a bigger track, like I know and Bill always does the 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 uh, breast cancer walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are we don't yeah, we're we're more yeah. located? Absolutely. Why can't we as a community? We have the space. We have all this stuff. Why can't we do walks? You know, so it, you know, I've always been trying to get like like the other part of funding. I'm thinking is. How can we get either, you know, the town of Greenberg or the community center like tie into them? If it is, you know, if the courts are going to be able to be used after school by the public, by the town of Greenberg residents, mm -hmm. right? Can they? Do they have a in? Do they have a you know a, a financial avenue to help? That that's you know just a thought. I don't know. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. So I think we're we're done with this part. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on and try and blaze through the additional remaining agenda items. Yes, Tracy. Well, when you were going over the, the um, information in the beginning, I had a question about high huge gyms since we still always here. Maybe that'll be helpful. So we did cover up those windows in high view, even though I was not happy with that. Um, and so <laughs> now and I took some pictures. They're all white painted, except for the southern wall, which does have a nice um, decal of, I think, is it? They're, they're uh, athletes. They're athletes, yes. right. I don't know if it's There's, um, football or they're, think, baseball. Uh, but. They're all different. There's right. basketball players, there right. is right. hockey There's, players. So can we get that on the other wall, too, where, or is something else going to go there? Where are you doing it? See, I'm glad I asked. Thank you. We'll have them done soft by, they'll be up by September. Wonderful. And we could put windows back too if we wanted. We just say, okay. I guess I'm not with it now. Yeah. Okay. So, can you bring up the agenda? Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. You can, you can, you're, going back. you're welcome to say if you want. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Right there. All right. So, we should be on item five five year facilities plan. Um, so, as you know, the plan is required by the, for NYCD and Board Policy 5630. Um, can yes. I just make, uh, add that came in this week? We got the secret approval on the fire hydrant. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, the next board agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That you are going to get it for tomorrow. That is important. Okay. What was that? 
Okay, BBS has provided a draft five-year capital facilities plan executive summary, uh, but we did it before we finished our uh, draft district strategic plan. I've got a copy of that up on Google Docs if you want to look at it. I think, have we posted it up all also on the website, the five-year plan? Uh, no, not yet. I just got it. So. Okay, so so one will affect the other, and as we go into next year, we're going to be looking at that five-year plan and trying to uh, align ourselves uh, with that. A lot of the plan has um, projects and uh, and high-level milestones in it, so we'll take a look at that in an upcoming meeting. Facilities projects. Um, we have two levels of uh, of reports. Uh, there's sort of the the larger projects. Uh, Dennis, you uh, you want to work with the uh, with, with the architects here, and uh, can we bring up the uh, the BBS report? It's BBS project steps. Here we go. Okay, is this you want Matina to do or you want to go? Oh, Dennis, do you want to do it or yeah. do you want Vincent to do it? I'll okay. start it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Woodlands uh, Middle School, High School Security Vestibule and in, in addition and alteration. Um, currently, the school district is uh, we're in discussion with the uh, contractor, um, and we're uh, pretty much looking to uh, start the project. Uh, hopefully, after graduation. Okay, so all yeah, the legal yeah. issues, the background have been resolved. We are there, actually, I believe there is a meeting. Right? Correct. Yes. We're on like a four-year plan with this one. So hopefully, we're getting. We're hopefully we'd like to start this yeah, on the week of the twenty-sixth. Okay. Uh, administration building, roofing, and masonry reconstruction. Uh, the skylights have been ordered. Uh, they're expected to be delivered soon. The flat roof. Uh, Reconstruction is ongoing. Uh, the mock-up of the new gutters and leaders was installed and approved. If you've been by the mansion, it really looks sharp now. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about skylights, that when I'm thinking skylights, like if I'm in the building. Yes, you were if you're in the building, there's there's a light that's the size of right. almost half of the size of this room. It's a substantial so opening. It has the uh, I don't know the official building term, but the layout of the building been discussed, or is it? It's the same layout. There was a, there was there was a, an existing skylight that's being replaced. Okay, thank you. Yes. and they're just okay. measuring, double checking, fabricating before they bring it out. They want to make sure everything's okay, perfect before thank they you. deliver it. Uh, moving on, uh, Highview Elementary Phase One Capital. Uh, a lot of the work is uh, scheduled to begin uh, after hours um, at uh, Highview, Jackson, uh, starting after school is out. Um, Highview Elementary does have the camps, so that's going to be uh, tricky, a little bit trickier, but there is uh, the scope of the project. There is more limited to the mechanical rooms, where like Bailey's throughout the whole building. Um, so the Bailey Elementary School is uh, that's. That started uh, several weeks ago. That's in full force. Uh, most of the uh, exterior demolition for the diffusers on the side of the building uh, that they, they cut into the brickwork over the last uh, week and a half. Um, and uh, Trustee Warner, you had asked me, and I, I'm Mike and Fred, I didn't get a chance to ask you guys if the MERV 13 filters will fit with the new uh, intake units. The uh, new unit ventilators in the uh, downstairs at Bailey. Yes, all of the new unit vents were specified with MER 13 filtration. Great, thank you. Good. That uh, we had this whole forest fire problem, mm -hmm. right? And then the thinking is that the the forest fires didn't go away. The wind's just blowing in a different direction, so it could happen again. So we may want to have that uh, in order. To it's nice to have the the good filtration, like the filtration we have in a lot of our buildings is is better than your typical home would have, especially we have the uh, the air purifiers in the classroom space is also in addition to that, the, with the carbon and uh, and uh, low filtration mm -hmm. for pollutants in the air. So that's, that's typically much better than most people would have in their homes. 
Um, also, uh, let's see, Bailey, we had our priority was to getting the basement level uh, completed prior to the start of uh, the uh, the campers coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on track. Uh, a lot of the units are being hung out, but the uh, asbestos abatement is part of that uh, project that we're running it's a little difficult to get yeah, like the units are going to be up that the abatement uh, hopefully we can do that if not we might have to work around the the campers as we would do the, the our students throughout the year on the weekends okay uh let's see uh balance of work will continue over the summer over there the woodlands uh, middle school high school a lot of the work scheduled to be uh started the week of uh, the last week of school um and same thing with the early childhood program over the last couple of nights. Uh, some of the workers have been uh, scoping out the mechanical areas at this building here, Woodlands High School. Actually, tonight they're working at uh, the early childhood building, um, cutting in some diffusers for the ventilation there on the outside of the building, not all the way through, but the exterior part of the grading to improve the insulation there. They're starting that work uh, over the last couple of nights now. Good. Uh, Woodlands Middle School High School reports uh, the letter of intent was submitted uh, and confirmation of funding and the final scope of work is finalized. The design is on hold. We're kind of mulling over the whole process mm -hmm. right here now. Mm -hmm. uh, Woodlands High School Middle School track, the letter of intent was submitted after uh, confirmation of funding and final scope of work is realized. Uh, six lane versus eight line, eight lane. Uh, the schematic designs. So, well, that's what we're mulling over now. That's where we are in the process. Uh, High View Elementary partial window replacement. Uh, construction documents are 90% complete. Uh, balance of the design on hold. Uh, preliminary budget of uh, 450,000. Uh, funding information and a uh, and, uh, board of ed resolution of uh, same needs to be provided with SED for submission. Uh, the sheepers and the sequers uh, we're working on. I believe we have the, the uh, sequers for that and the sheep bow. I don't believe we're waiting for that to come back, I believe. So now let me understand. This is one of those projects where we're using end of year fund balance to take care of it. Is that correct? No. No. This is part of the capital inner fund transfer from 423-24. For, for the high view window? Yes. That's part of the capital and fund transfer. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, it's not year and fund balance. Okay. No, it's capital and fund transfer. Okay. okay. And I just have a question, Mike. I thought that we sent you the funding information and the BOE resolution for this already. I don't believe so, Lisa, no. All right, if, I you did, I, if you did, I apologize. No, if you, don't if, send it again. you know what, Mike, if you can check, if you didn't, let me know and I'll have Chrissy get it right to you. Sure. sure. Okay, thank you. And that was my point. Okay. Good. Uh, the fire uh, hydrant project, uh, construction documents are 90% complete. The balance of the designs on hold. Preliminary budget was 115000 800. 815000 uh, funding uh, information and board of it. Resolution needs to be yeah. Sorry, that's I, I yeah. yet. The secret the went through and that was uh, submitted. We uh, got that back. And I, I'm pretty sure that we sent you the funding information. I, again, I'll, I'll double check, Lisa. I'll, okay. If not, I'll get in touch with your office. Okay. Okay. The energy performance contract with the uh, RWE. Mm -hmm. oh, can I speak yep. about that? There you go. So, uh, Mike, Dennis, and I. Had a meeting with Kaliana uh, this this week, I think, or maybe the end of last week, I think, and um, it was all about the funding, the rebates. So Kaliana has applied for the NYSERDA rebate, and it was received. That if you remember how we needed you to get through that work, but the remaining funding now is called that is that goes through the Internal Revenue Service, and there was a bill that was put passed in November of 2022 for investment tax credits. And it's called the direct pay option for the investment tax credit for energy property. District will receive this payment directly from the federal government for up to 30% of the total investment made for PV and energy storage that is being installed at the Woodlands Middle High School. Because we're a nonprofit um, tax exempt entity, that's why we will see, receive the direct pay because we don't pay taxes 
It could go to offset your taxes. We don't pay taxes, so we'll get the direct pay. The district, will, uh, Amy and I, will file for this with our external auditors to help us, okay? Mm -hmm. After the project is complete and permission to operate is obtained from Con Edison. Taxable entities always received this credit in the past. This new IRS regulation uh, passed November of 2022 now allows tax-exempt organizations to get this credit. So how much is it? Um, well, 30% would be about $2.6 million. Do they have a max up to 30%? Is there a max? Well, our, our max would be it's two million five hundred and eighty five thousand five. It's not a dollar. No, thirty percent of the project. Okay. So um, RWE or Kaliana said that the district will receive most, if not all, of this amount is credit through direct pay. So once it is done, Amy and I will work with uh, Melissa from O'Connor Davies to file that, so we can get that credit, and we will then put that against the project, like we had always. Decided we would mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though we would have to take the funding for it, once we got this money, we just dumped it right back on. So I'm sorry, Ben. Oh, that's good. Very good. Okay, the our day Bailey parcel roof replacement. Uh, the letter of intent was uh, submitted to a SED uh, this week. Um, the CEPRA and the SHEPA were required, and we do have the CEPRA for the Bailey parcel roof. The SHEPA we have for the auditorium. And I'm not sure if one is required for the roofing sheet. Right. Well, didn't, we have that back yet. Mike, didn't you say that we didn't need shipo for roofs? We typically you don't, but because you have a pitched shingled roof, you do. Oh, okay. Yep, I, I believe I'm waiting on that part of uh, okay. the other. We have the sheeple for the uh, auditorium okay. and the secret for the auditorium and the partial roof right now. Got it. Yeah, um, when the time comes to do the other flat roofs, Lisa, you won't need it there. Okay, got so, it. Wanted. May, may I interrupt? Yeah, the partial roof for for clarity, maybe we say not the auditorium, because when we say partial roof, I think I'm confusing the auditorium is one project and partial roof is what's left after the yeah. auditorium. Is so that correct? We have the, the money for the auditorium, right? Yeah. And because of that, if you remember. They want us to do, uh, DASI wanted us not to repair the roof. They felt they wouldn't pay for a repair. That's why we included the replacement of that section of, and then some of the roof. It's not that one section that encompasses the auditorium in the small section of the hallway. We call, the hallway we around call it partial because it's not the whole roof. Just like and the, the other roof, 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 roof Auditorium. No, it's not. Yeah. This, this is the, project. This is the capital inner fund for 2324. Can we call it something more so? The partial roof is maybe. I'm, how about we just, the the only one how about we just call it the RG Daily Auditorium roof? There we go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, that would work. Go ahead. Sorry, going back to uh, the EPC. We keep we had to table an item a couple of times because we were waiting on the full scope, et cetera, et cetera. Where are we on that? Is that um, still the good question? Bang, nope. Bang. We, we've spoken to John Kane also and Kaliana and John Kane. I responded back to him. They're sending us the final contract. Because okay. it's 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 now-ish or December, yeah, yeah. he said by so uh, yeah. maybe said by 23rd. Yeah, by the 23rd, I is yeah. what I saw. I'm pretty sure it said 23rd. Okay, in our email. So okay. I'll put that out of my mind until. Okay. Just keep it in your memory, thanks. Or well, no, I want to take it out. Yeah, you know, nothing good has happened. Become concerned. Okay. Oh, and then we also have the, the design's been submitted, and we're uh, coordinating the roof for the samples to find out what's in the roof. Uh, that has to, uh, we have to get enviro science involved in mm -hmm. our roof work. They drill into the roof, they find out what's in there, they test in several spots to find out what's under there, if, if there's any abatement required or how to proceed. And SED submission is targeted for uh, the end of July of 2023. Uh, so if abatement is needed and we don't have it submitted till July 23, that work might not get done until 
uh, if, if we don't do it. Well, high beams was done in the fall. Yeah, it, typically, you know, if, if there's uh, something going on in the roof, like the mansion yeah. roof had. Yeah. Remember, remember the flood? Yeah, no, that happened in the school year. Yeah, the pavement part is typically it's outside work. There's uh, different regulations. Okay. okay, so are there any questions on this? Thank you for your report, Mike. You're very well. And, uh, Thank you. We will uh, we will now proceed to the uh, I believe it's the the lesser project. Just a minute. Can I have a question? Yeah. I am gonna to have to leave, but I'm curious. I'm not sure where it fits in the funding for that because you mentioned the um, electric buses before. Um, is that something that's what you're so here? I have been uh, Fred and I have been uh, emailing back and forth this mm -hmm. week, it, just within the last day or two, and he and I are gonna set up a, uh, a time to meet next week to discuss that um, that electric bus. Proposal thing that, that it, that's been sitting there for it, a while, it, right? But it, what I, what I think is going to be a little quirky for us is we don't we own, own our buses, buses right? Oil does, so, but we own the property. We put the electric in, just like they pay for fuel. They're mm -hmm. going to have to pay for the electricity. But we're, I was going to work with Fred to see if we qualify for. It. Good. Right. Thank Good. you. And in the same topic, different specialty um with the new buses that we got we didn't have cameras on them you're talking about the stop sign arms no the cameras inside of the buses to see what i thought children. we did have cameras on all the new buses no so there were some buses that didn't get cameras i guess yet maybe that's in progress so if you could just update the board on that would be helpful sure. do you want to tell everybody about the stop arms david camera no installation Is there any update on the stop arms? Yes, the last that I told you that mm -hmm. uh, we heard from the Westchester government and they're putting a uh, intermunicipal agreement together. We are on the list. They did confirm that they received our request and actually we are number one on the list. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know where to ask that on the agenda. Um, I don't know what Yeah, I said work with it. Okay. So, um, very quickly, before I go into smaller projects, I will mention that the grade level reconfiguration plan, um, we had initially had that we had this idea of having Lee of Jackson be pre-K and kindergarten, Ivy being grades one and two, RJ Bailey grades three through five, Woodlands Middle High School grades six through 12. We're not there yet. Um, we, we were trying to determine whether that was something that was possible to do. Uh, we did some research to find out whether the old CS arch numbers would help us. I guess we've got partial information, but not enough. Right. So now we're so doing. We are, we've been working on getting, I've asked Dennis, his head custodians measure every room, and we're going to map that out. And then we would either have to, we'd have to go to the SCD website and see if we could figure out. Maximum occupancy. Right. Yeah, but that's is. not. Um, our forte. So, yes. so you know, I'm I'm all about careful with how things are the words, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say we have an idea that's not entirely true, but that the board did not discuss nor vote on this and doing this. The board has not voted to go forward with right. the administration. So the administration has, has proposed it, and we don't have enough knowledge of it right. to see if it's feasible. But I so think the board can decide whether we I can do it. You do need to have that. You need to have that clarity, though, when you say this, because then some of us get questions or feedback or you know calls and ask them. So it needs to be clear that this has not been thoroughly discussed yet. It's, okay. in, the design, okay. it's in the beginning stages. Thank you. Right now, we're collecting the information. Right. Okay, we have the inside of the building. There's, there's rules like you need uh, um, every toilet for 15 students. There's uh, so many students per square foot if it's this kind of classroom, as opposed to just like four different types of yes. spaces. It's, it's a pretty involved study that we have to Thank you. figure out. Okay. And you expect we're selling the information right now. If we Perhaps in September? Maybe in September, but it's going to be very preliminary. Okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> All right, is there anything else you want? No, nope, I just want to get there. Okay, so now we can move on to smaller projects. Again, it's been taken okay, uh, smaller <laughs> projects. Uh, uh, ECP bathrooms will be upgraded as part of phase one during the summer. Um, during the thunderstorm uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, tree fell down on the power lines between the East uh, ECP building and the transportation building. Electrical repairs are in progress. Uh, phone and uh, computer access and electricity is temporarily uh, interrupted. While we uh, make the repair, we're going to be uh, changing uh, four telephone poles and resecuring the uh, uh, the the lines, the cable, the fiber rock, the, the fiber rock, the high uh, tension lines uh, along the stretch of uh, the area that was uh, damaged. Uh, I'd like to say, um, looking at the picture of that tree that came down, mm -hmm. it's completely covered in vines. Yes, there was some poison ivy. Um, That's correct. The thing is, is that I would like somewhere where we have the issue that you want to show the trees on the tree. Do we have it? That yeah. they start getting cut at the oh, bottom. Yeah, we've, we've been, we've been going around. There wasn't so many lines. You can see that it was like, it's on the way to put your hands around. That's not right. It's, it's, it's a plan. It's a plan. It's a plan. We have that as part of the arborist now is going along. And not only that, it's cutting the line. It's just so we're going to have these problems. I started that last year. And it's it's all about it. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about how we're beating the heat in terms of the uh, we're right at the end of the school year for the ECP students? Precisely. And, yes. We've been very lucky that the weather hasn't been blistering hot. And with ECP having their graduation ceremony, they spent a good amount of time here today in the auditorium practicing for tomorrow. And tomorrow is their graduation, so they're be over here for that was portion right. of the day. But Mr. Washington had decided just, that he just, would that he would um, keep the windows and doors closed because it was cool in the building, and he said that it was it was okay, it was bearable. We had checked with him twice during the day to make sure, and we had an alternative plan of where those students would go. And then the expectation is that after this weekend, the electricity will be fully restored right. and then there will be a measure that we, I'm anticipating from what our contractor has said that it would be restored this weekend. But in the event that they find or come to a glitch, remember we're off on Monday. Okay. So they have more time to work on it. So school on Tuesday will open up and operate. And I have to say, just as a sidebar, I'm going to give a pitch here that. Mr. Pugliese and his staff, Mr. Gunn and um, Mr. Santos and the security staff really stepped up to the plate. And this was a good example, I would say, of a small emergency. Mm -hmm. They didn't panic. They, I mean, we really put a plan in place to, so people didn't, you know, that tree could have fell on a car and it really injured somebody, but they, they really went right into action and it was very fast that we got everything they got. I I just supervised them. <laughs> God went, but they were very fast at uh, putting the plan together to get traffic turned around, et cetera. So I saw that you blocked off Pat to home for a little while until all the cones and stuff and the, and the gates were in place. There was a bus parked across the way. Correct. Um, I know that testing was going on at Woodlands High School and that you made sure that the power didn't go down until after the, the, after the Regents tests were over. Well, it didn't, but you the electric didn't, didn't have affected the high school. It didn't affect the the transportation, ECP, and the teacher center. And the mansion. And the mansion. Okay, good. And we had to, you know, at, as ever, any emergency is, all of a sudden we're wondering, huh, what if the server goes down? Is there enough electricity for right. the server? Right. Is there enough electricity? There's no electricity. So uh, the, our contractor said if Royal Coke needed to pump gas, they would put a generator. Right. We've done that. Up. We've had winter We've emergencies and we yes. brought in generators exactly. for, for various buildings exactly. on the campus. Exactly. Yes, sir. So I, I did want to just add a comment that. Um, because of the network work, and, and again, thank you to Dennis and his team and his foresight um, also in, in helping that. But the network work we did this year, um, because the mansion was our single point of failure, um, it would have brought the entire district down essentially. So over the course of since last summer, 
we've off-sited all the critical servers and systems and switches. We've installed redundant connections, and that was really isolated to that little segment of network impact of ECP and the teacher center and did not expand throughout the rest of the district where it would have prior to us doing this work this year. Good. That was really good. Thank and you. I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Lee, you know, how long is the battery back up? And mm -hmm. it's nice to know that these redundant systems are and, in and place. It was already, yes. already, yeah, it was already past its its life expectancy on mm -hmm. keeping those systems up. But because we built redundancy and moved all our critical systems out based and or otherwise off prem, we have backups mm -hmm. and redundancy to keep the keep the district up and running. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. question. Yes. We've had to bring in generators multiple times over the years, right? Do we not own no even one? Oh no, we have we had a little smaller generator for the transportation building. We have ours where they could run their, their radios, their their powering they They've been using it uh, for the last two days now. I would think in a larger project, as we keep doing projects, we should do Correct. You generators are. for every building mm -hmm. that would put, like a hospital. We're, we're actually trying to get the, uh, trying to see if we can the do the best. control which we can't play with in one Just the basics so your building wouldn't freeze, so your refrigeration would be protected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, moving on here, uh, Jackson. Uh, we, well, we requested the uh, quotes for running the electric uh, lines for the poles. Uh, the trenching work alone was a substantial amount. Um, we're going to address this. We're going to try to address this in house over the summer with our own people. Try to save some funding. Uh, High view, uh, new fencing was uh, installed around the uh, emergency access path. Uh, over by the nurse's office and a smaller section over by the playground was also uh, replaced. Um, R.J. Bailey, uh, Mr. Ram, you want to uh, comment about the uh, yes. the wall so pads? The wall pads, as you know, we had to, uh, priced them out and they were quite you know expensive. Mm -hmm. So we were doing some more research, and we think that we may be able to get them this year and have it done over the summer. Okay. Okay, uh, some of the curbs and sidewalks, uh, we plan to reduce uh, the concrete area on the north side of the building. Right now, there's a uh, contractor's got a storage container on there, so we're going to have to wait until that storage container is moved before we can do some of the work over there. And does that, is that dependent on the asbestos removal happening? No, that's, 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 that's going to go forward. Well, that's, well, that's going to go forward anyway, because that's where the mechanical contractors hanging whole housing mm -hmm. units for the downstairs, they wouldn't all fit in the building. He's, he's installing them now. He's got five or six of them up. He has a few more to install, but he's also has storing his um, piping and his other mechanical mm -hmm. equipment that he needs for there, because there wasn't just enough room in, in the building. To okay, so that one would probably be needed. Okay. Yeah. Good. On yes. the north side of the building is the side of the building where the cars enter. Yes, if you're looking at the front of the building from the main road, it will be on your on your on left. left. And so you're reducing the concrete that's the there's a path. Block there? Yeah, there's a path that goes to nowhere where the garden is. Yeah. It just doesn't go away where we're going to remove about 20 feet of it and just turn it into grass again. And turn it into grass. So now the kids that walk to school, they go in the front of the school, they don't come around and go in the back. No, they typically uh they 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 uh, walk around the other side of the building. The sidewalks are, are there. They don't, nobody really goes in that entrance. So it goes around the south side. Just <clears throat> wondering, because I know they crossed the street there and I didn't think they went in the front. Well, there is a sidewalk that goes all the way length, along the length of the building. If you wanted to walk around the building, you would have most of the people from see walk towards the car wash and go over that way. There's okay. two entrances on the other side of the building. And this, and there is a sidewalk on the south side Correct. that goes around. Yes, all the way around the building. Yes. All right. Yeah, it wouldn't be like the students would not have. I must sidewalk. be the only one that used the north side. Oh, okay. <laughs> but actually, it, it just ended. It, 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 it didn't continue. It just no, it stopped. stopped. Yeah, it, it, it stops. Stopped. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's go next. Right. Uh, Bailey, um, phase one brickwork uh, is being prepared for the installation of new air intakes. Um, brickwork is uh, pretty much done there for the uh, roughing. Uh, Woodlands uh, requested uh, the same thing. Quotes for some of the electrical lines. It looks like we're going to be doing some of that trench work and try to save some money. Uh, the quotes that I got were 
mostly. Uh, we, uh, uh, the uh, quotes for the boys and uh, girls bathroom, uh, we're trying to uh, do that over the summer. Uh, we want to upgrade some bathrooms every year. We want to make that our priority down here. We have this beautiful facility here, the, the gym now, and we want to have the bathrooms you know, brought up to, to make it look like it belongs with the rest of the uh, complex down there. Sorry. What does sink hangers mean? Is that sink hangers? Uh, what happens, unfortunately, is um, especially in the ladies' room, <clears throat> they like to congregate in there. They like to sit on the sinks, talk, do the makeup, or whatever. But they, they pull yep. the unit right out of the wall because yeah. they weren't just they weren't made for a, city. Or a right. person to sit on. They're made to to hang themselves. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change all the valves and the plumbing as we do the bathroom where we're going to install carriers and hangers to support the anticipation of somebody standing on the sink or whatever they were, were doing in there. Unfortunately, as we try to make improvements, the kids are right behind us damaging it. We did all that work to put the urinal partitions up and they ripped them off the wall. Has there been a conversation with the student body about I think those kinds I, of I behaviors. Do, I do believe that from the camera, they can tell what group of boys have gone. They can identify that. And I believe Mr. Brady um, and Mr. Smith have spoken. So just going back to the layout of the, I mean, I mean, I know we've spoken in previous meetings, like if there's a mirror in there, which I think a lot of them no longer have mirrors. You're putting it not near the sink, right? Okay, so if somebody to sink on the mirror, opposite wall, so how do you say it? Typically, you want just like it's much of stainless, mm -hmm. right? But it's not something that could be broken. Right. It's you need something commercial, industrial, okay. unfortunately. Okay. Um, as far as the um, senior prank, we are still calculating the cost because, unfortunately, every day something new comes up that was damaged, broken stolen, et cetera. So um, I don't think it will be below 10,000. I think it'll be over $10,000. Um, there were damaged cafeteria tables. There were damaged computer monitors. There were damaged textbooks. There were damaged desks. There was- um, The monitor in the commons area has a, uh, yep. something um, wrong there with There was the a lot of, of there was damage to carpets. And not just alone um, calculating the man hours that we had to have staff who were not doing their regular duties to do this. So still ongoing. Are, it's still ongoing and we're still um, calculating. On, on top of all the costs, just speaking from the community, um, I think there's, you know, I know it's a security issue, but a lot of people are wondering why aren't the facilities secured enough to let the kids in, did they break in? Was it against the law? This is, I know it's a security thing, but since we're facilities, we're supposed to be making sure that the kids can't get in and do this. Uh, without going into heavy details, a lot of the community, and even on social media, it concerned that it being a little too lax about, and eventually we pay, the community pay for that. And they're not happy to hear this. And it's bad, it's a bad thing on the community as well as the school. So I'm hoping that they will put forth an effort that we may have to do better cameras, if the cameras were sufficient enough, if the windows are sufficient enough, if the alarms are not sufficient enough, we need to do something because it's it, you know, again, like I said, it may be more than 10,000, I'm sure it will be. Uh, it's something that facilities need to address with security. Maybe have a joint meeting with the administration, security, and we, you know, it's 2023. Sure, but unfortunately, because it's an ongoing investigation, we cannot comment sure, at the time on But I'm just pointing what, what people so, from so. the community were saying no, to me. And, that, and I get it because people are saying that to us, but we can't yeah, speak about exactly. it. So, you know, so my kids are younger, so obviously senior banks are something you hear about at every spring. Um, but to my working knowledge, this has been severe right. in this setting. 
So is there something in particular about this year about the students versus the school? Or is it I mean, well, it's not, I can very, in a very limited fashion. I, we, I, it can't be spoken about until the investigation is done. Okay, but it's just, so am I understanding it's just- We're in a post-COVID environment. Abnormal. So people who would have gone through experiences at younger ages haven't, and now they're going to them at an older age. Yeah, go ahead, Katie. Hi, um, yeah, I had a question, well, about this, I don't know if, if Lisa, you're allowed to ask, but might insurance cover some of the um, damages? Uh, it, this has been reported to our insurance company, yes. Okay, and then my other question was about the bathrooms before, is, um, it, are they gonna be repainted? Is that part of the plan? Uh, well, yes, um, part of what we are trying to do is, unfortunately, we have a large number of bathrooms throughout all of our school buildings, and we're trying to identify, and um, just like, for example, that we are uh, replacing the classroom floors, we plan on putting the bathrooms in a rotational kind of um, cycle. If a bathroom can't be done, let's say this year, Mr. Kuklis and I have spoken about getting them at least painted um, and doing some of that cosmetic work that we can. Oh, okay. I was referring to the ones by the gym that are getting. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's gonna that's gonna be a complete overhaul. Yes. Yeah, new new uh, epoxy walls. Yeah, uh, everything. That's, that's what we're uh, that, Yeah, that's gonna be done there. And because the correct me if I'm wrong. The piping is so old. So right. the piping the wall has to be. You know, we, want, we want to make sure that if you're doing all this work, put the hanger so that the kids can sit on the sink. You want to make sure that the valves hold, so this way we don't have to break the wall next year on our new bathroom that was just redone that hadn't been done in forty or fifty years. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, <laughs> so if you're talking about redoing the piping and the wall, blah 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 blah, is this an opportunity? I'm thinking of the female bathroom. To it's huge. One stall, the got a lot of space for a gathering that we don't really need. Is it, if you're going to redo the piping out of it, is there a way to like split it so it's two smaller single Wait. stall, it's single use gender bathrooms? You, 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 you can't have to have ABA appliances. Excellent right. point. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you have to make sure. So you need that bigger correct. space. Right. Exactly. If we had more, Wait, if it was longer, than correct. Right, but we don't. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, the section of the uh, baseball right field fence was replaced due to a damage from uh, fall and trees. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. And I'm just going to take this opportunity. First of all, um, as you know, um, I work with the Scouts this year. I think I may have mentioned this before. Um, we have two Eagle Scouts in this building. One of those Eagle Scouts did a project to refurbish the batting cages. Mm -hmm. He got help from both the Scout troop and the Woodlands baseball team and possibly other students. You were a very big help in this project. We're celebrating it tomorrow night, but I did want to oh, say okay. nice. what the students nice do nice great job. things as well and help refurbish the bad cage this year. Are they getting their Eagle Scout? Tomorrow night is this a night ceremony. Congratulations. Wow, very good. Uh, let's see, B B uh, Manson, uh, BBS recording yeah. item. Yep, yeah, that's all set. The bus garage. Uh, we consider paving an electric vehicle charging station as a long term yeah. plan. Need uh, funding. Source of the pilot program. Let's see. And we're on to the okay. finance. On to the finance. Ms. Raymond. Okay, thank you. So, as we said, um, the RJ Bailey grant from uh, former Assemblyman Avenante, we uh, literally are 99% done. I just need to get those two signatures, and that should be the final hurdle for that. Um, the money. That is given to us from Senator Stewart Cousin. There are some questions and items that they are asking me for. And one of them is I have to um, give them the results of the bond referendum. So until I can give them that, it won't move to the next um, step or stage. And they know that and they know when it's when the part, well, we had it as a preliminary date, but um, we will have it as a final date, October 17th. So then I, I will get back to my representative there. Um, yes, Assemblyman Shimsky had uh, met with Dr. Iverson and myself and said that if she could get uh, in the new budget, three hundred dollars to five hundred thousand dollars what could we use it for? We haven't heard anything from her 
um, since the budget has passed. Um, so that I guess is still pending. We haven't heard anything. So that's okay. That's not a no. That's a it's not a no. We haven't heard anything. Okay. Not a no. So we have not yet heard. Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. American Rescue Plan. Um, <clears throat> we have talked about this before. We have used some of the money for learning loss, but that $1.6 million that Trustee Pineda had referenced um, will be there and we can use it for something else, but it's all timing. And we wanna make sure that all these other projects, everything falls back in place once we get the money. So we're going to, with, um, I've been talking with Mike and um, Messina and as this ventilation work, Fred, is starting to happen, I would like to apply for the, our American Rescue money, the $1.6 so that we can yeah. capture that money before it expires. Um, we did find out that we won't lose the money that was allocated to us by New York State because, because of um, the deal that the president made. Um, people were afraid that we would lose a, a part of our American Rescue money, we will not because it's obligated funds. Any of the funds that were given to any state that are unobligated, the federal government could, can pull back. But in light of that, knowing that we won't because it's obligated, I would still like to use the first $1.6 million of ventilation, get it through the American Rescue Plan and get our money and be done with it. So that is our intention, Fred, um, to do as the ventilation work you know we've done this summer um uh and i think that's it okay audit committee update well lisa, lisa gave us uh, ms raymond gave us good news right before the meeting that's the statement here the david is included about the new york state controllers audit continues is false if they're ending soon so much no. sooner than expected right no. so give the good news yeah, they have they have ended the tax Certiari audit okay. and it found that we are not overfunded. So we're good. What we've been putting in, we're okay. They are now moving on to the second. They are going to do it. Audit. Okay. Yes, they did. The big the big lady came down today and said, I am going to go ahead. Um, I've changed my mind. We are going to do time and material. Okay. So they're starting with some good news. So they're not done. <laughs> they're just done. They're not gone. They have not vacated the table. I just here. wanted to hear all the good news tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, and again, as David has noted here, we've uh, reviewed the internal audit uh, risk assessment and intensive review of purchasing and accounts payable. Um, the good news is many things from previous years have been solved. There's a lot of good news. And just a little bit of uh, a few items that were observations for improvement, and most of those items have already been getting resolved over the past many months um, by the business office. So uh, I think we're looking good. Uh, the board will have resolutions over the next few meetings to both approve some of our auditing teams for the coming year and for the results and corrective action plans for the internal audit risk and uh, intensive review. Any questions? questions? Good. Uh, you already talked about the energy contract re rebate uh, earlier on in the meeting. Uh, facilities fund update, no change. Uh, I, you talked about that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that leaves the Edmont Corporation issue, which the earlier the earlier portions are the same as uh, as they were in the in previous meeting. The new material is towards the end. Um, so Senator Cousins pledged at a previous meeting to take action on the incorporation issue to try and reform the process in various ways uh, to deal with the, with the uh, possibility of uh, an Edgemont Corporation incorporation petition, which would, uh, which would lessen the, uh, the tax base for the entire town of Greenberg, and that would include us and make it difficult for us to pass budgets and, and, and bonds. And uh, so her, her actions so during this legislative session, which is now kind of coming to an end, uh, included a $100,000 uh, in the New York State budget for a Rockefeller Institute study on the Edgemont Incorporation issue. That includes, uh, you know, how much it would cost, you know, what, what the effects would be on the village of Edgemont if it becomes a village and on the town of Greenberg as a whole. On 610, the New York State legislature passed a bill 
that's Senate Bill 7537 or Assembly Bill A, A uh, 7761, creating a statewide village incorporation commission. It's three people uh, appointed at the, at the state level to validate incorporation petitions and allowing public objections on grounds that weren't in there before, including that the establishment of such village is not in the fiscal service and taxation interests of the population, which would constitute the residents of such village or the population which constitutes the residents of such town. Okay, so the, so the legislation looks like you can go in and object to the petition and they have to, the commission has to consider whether or not to, it should go forward based upon the financial impact of the town as well. Uh, unfortunately, there's a little bit at the end that um, of the bill that's, that's, that's perhaps less than satisfactory. I went to a Saving uh, Greenberg Coalition meeting on 613 and they discussed it and uh, the, there was dissatisfaction with the legislation, notably that the surrounding town is not required to be included in an incorporation vote. So it, it's still, you get to the petition level, you know, the commission lets it through, it's still just the people in the village voting on it, not the surrounding town. And that incorporation petitions started before January 1st 2024 are grandfathered out of the above provision of the legislation. So there is an already existing petition with signatures on it. So it doesn't even, even after the governor signs this thing and it becomes law, um, the fact that they've got to, you know, once you put a signature on it and it's prior to January 1st, 2024, then that commission doesn't get to look specifically at this, this paragraph H, they don't get to look at the, uh, at the health of the surrounding town as something that would allow them to disallow the petition going turning into a vote. Um, so that's where we are. That's uh, <laughs> those are the actions that have happened. And uh, stay tuned. Never a dull moment in Greenberg. Okay, finance and facility. We're done with the year. Yep. So I can tell you after we you and I spoke. Um, prior to our admin meeting, we had a very long and arduous admin meeting where all of us, all of the admins, we went over the calendar month by month. Um, it's not done yet. I think we have to have another meeting because we haven't gotten through all of the months, but Dr. Iverson got through a, a good chunk of them. Um, and everybody had weigh-in and stuff. So I didn't see, um, as you put here, I mean, if everybody wants to continue to do the third Thursday, I didn't see where that would come. Do you see? No. Yeah. So. Okay, so then the, so what's going to happen is you're going to complete your process. We've already had our last meeting for the year. So the only thing we as a committee should do is say, what rules should we come up with? Do we like staying with the third Thursday and then planning around events if they get to the way? We want to do something else next year. I'll try and come up with some dates when I get the calendar and then email it out to everybody. And in the same way that you're allowed to plan meetings, right? All the open meetings laws allow you to plan meetings outside of meetings, right? So uh, so then we can get people's feedback on, on what dates are acceptable. And we'll try and take care of that, um, you know, between now and, uh, and when, uh, when we reconvene in September. Uh, so what do people think? How do you feel about this past year? Are Thursdays good or do people want to do something different? Ideally, we're hearing from the public members right yes. now. And I don't know if you're chatting about it, but ideally you're speaking it so we can all hear and share. So what, what like Katie, Gabby, is or Gabby still here? For me, third Thursday is fine. Okay. Any, yeah. Can you see? So who I can't see. Can you scroll down a little bit? See who else is on the list. So see who else is on the list. Yeah. It's still here. Everyone's logged out. Everybody's <laughs> done. Yeah. We got through. We got through all the stuff Wait, we hear. Right? Doctor, Doctor Allen still on? Yep. Carol Allen, are you there? All right. I'm going to go with the third Thursday. Well, I'm going yeah. I'm I'm to throw a little monkey wrench. Yeah. So thinking, so I'm assuming 
Um, the third Thursday is going to be late in September and after the bond vote. So let's not do that in September. Let's do it before the bond vote. Maybe start that Thursday in November, or you're going to do your third Thursday to FinTech fin and have other meetings to discuss the bond vote. I don't know. Like, we want to schedule multiple meetings. Right. Earlier in month. Prior to, uh, except in October. Okay. And why don't we do like the second week of September? It'll get, it'll start to get tricky because we'll have to work around back to school. We'll have to work around all the back to school stuff. I have to see that. Right. right. So I'll look, right. I will look for openings. I'll try for Thursdays. If I can't get Thursdays, I'll get what I can get. Yeah. I'll try and do it I'll sooner see, rather than I'll later. see if I can get a tenant September and October so you can see. That's what, what's because we've gone over September and October. <clears throat> so I see if I can tentative once so you can see what's scheduled. Question I don't know, I don't know what's going on in leadership as far as would we get access to that before it's gone to the printer so that we could include at least September and October so it's advertised to as wide a public as possible to and maybe put on there. And it's some silly I'm expecting to get the whole thing or going to the printer okay. like in previous years so mm -hmm. that all, all of our meetings get on here. We want to not just appeal to correct that's what I'm saying. Age, like to get people, but also people who are still stuck on paper like me. Yep. Okay. And <laughs> right. We want as wide an audience as possible to so use everything you can. You use all the online resources, you use the hard copy resources as well. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Trust, trust you more. Yes, sir. Sorry. One quick question. As a, as a greater board, knowing that there's multiple committees, do you guys coordinate amongst yourself to kind of work out all the committees working yes. out? Yes. 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 We, we right? get together as a board and we figure out who's going to be on it, what, what the committee assignments are for the year. And then but in terms of yeah, dates, who's so, taken Thursdays, who's taken Wednesdays? Right. More, more in terms of not the charges as much as the Wednesdays. Uh, usually there'd be so it, it used to be that the the community engagement committee would go and and have a similar process of planning the administrative calendar was done and then and then you get a big hard copy calendar and you would go through and say okay when can we have CEC meetings let's not try let's try not to step on the Woodlands High School scholarship fund and and work around that when will our events be when will our meetings be and each committee would do that and if we Came uh, came upon conflicts, then we try and resolve those. And only a few committees would be doing that process and getting on the hard copy calendar. The other committees might do it around everything once they're done and published. No, but I we try to we try to avoid each other. Um, and keep it much <laughs> um, but it gets tricky when dates are floating, so yeah. we try to fix them. Does anyone have any other items that they wish to discuss? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Do I hear a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 I think Opposed. We accomplished a lot. Yes, we did. Thank you, everyone. Bye.